Hello, this is Wayland Chow. I'm going to be explaining how I introduce a basic analytical framework to my business law students at both the undergraduate and postgraduate levels. This is a framework that I get them to use throughout the whole course. I first provide my students with a simple, relatable, but non-legal scenario. Uh, that they can analyze uh, using the analytical framework that I'll introduce uh, to them. So I, I, I've chosen a short uh, video from a soccer game uh, that involves a ball touching a player uh, in the penalty area near near the uh, near the goal, and the decision that the deci that the students have to decide is whether or not there has been an illegal handball that leads to a penalty kick. So here's here's the video. So you see the, the ball has touched uh, this player uh, on the sort of shoulder or upper arm. Uh, there, are, there are rules about this in soccer that I'll introduce uh, to the students. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is uh, the video that they, that they get to watch. And they also have access to it on their own. It, it, is, it is online and they can watch it uh, over and over again to do this analysis. I now ask the students to play the role of the referee and to make a decision or to make a call based on what they saw on the video. And to make that decision, I ask them to analyze what happened in the video by doing three steps. The first step is identifying or stating the issue that needs to be decided. The second step is determining what is the applicable or relevant rule that is needed to decide the issue. And I give them a link to the actual rule in soccer that would be applicable. And then the third step is to explain how they applied that applicable rule to the facts of the case. The facts of the case would be what they saw on the video. And by applying those facts to the rule, they would come to their decision. And I asked them to work in small groups and to provide written answers that are inputted into a platform called Socrative. So the, the, the login information is, is provided there. Uh, there is a virtual room number and the Socrative website. Let's now talk a little bit about Socrative, which uh, you may or may not be familiar with. So just in case you are not familiar with it, Socrative is a, an online platform with um, many very useful uh, features for educators, and then most of those features are absolutely free. There is a paid version, which I've never you know, had the need to uh, to get. So, um, so all all the all the features that I use are free, especially including the one that I'll be talking about uh, right now. So, one specific feature is the ability to pose a question to students that requires a written answer. There is another feature where you can ask them a multiple choice question, uh, but the feature I'm, I'm using here is one asking for a written answer. So that feature is called short answer. So even though it's called short answer, it, there is really no limit that I'm aware of on the length of the answers that the students can input. So that an answer can be actually quite long. It doesn't necessarily have to be, have to be short. So, I would log in to my account on Socrative, uh, click on short answer, and put in the question that I want to ask my students. So the question in this exercise uh, could be, uh, was there an illegal handball that happened in the video? Or did this player, Nanny, the name of the player, Nanny, did Nanny commit an illegal handball? So that, so that question is posed on Socrative and students would sign in just simply uh, by going to the website and logging in using a virtual room number. Uh, the word virtual room number is something that is unique to you as the instructor. Uh, and they, the students don't need anything else to get in. They don't need to register for an account or anything like that. They just need to know the virtual 
room number. And then they're in and they see the question and they have the, then the ability to input their answer to the question. So the students would work together in their small groups of three or four, three or four people to, you know, to collaborate, to write their analysis of what they saw uh, on the video. Once all of the groups have posted their answers onto Socrative, all, everything that's been posted would appear on my screen, on my Socrative screen, which would in an in-person class would be projected onto the big screen. If it was an online class, it would be on the shared screen that everyone would see. So everyone would see all of the posted answers. An additional thing that I would do, and it's entirely optional, is to give the students an opportunity to review and vote on all the answers. So I would start a vote and every student would then need to log in to, uh, in, uh, to Socrative using the same virtual room number that I mentioned before. And they would see all of the different answers posted by all of the groups and have an opportunity to read through them. And I would ask them to vote for the best analysis. After all the votes are in, I would do a detailed critique of the answer that received the most votes. After completing the soccer analysis exercise, I introduce the basic analytical framework that I want my students to apply throughout the course. So in the business law course, that framework is called the three-step legal analysis. The first step is to state the legal issue or legal questions that arise from the facts of the case. The second step is to state the applicable law or the relevant legal rules that are needed to answer that legal issue. And the third and final step is to apply the law to the facts, which is connecting the facts to the relevant legal rules in order to come to a conclusion. Let's just briefly go over the steps that I went through. The first step was to watch the video, that soccer video. The second step was to review instructions on how to analyze that video using a three-step analysis. And then the third step was to have students work in small groups to prepare a written analysis. And each group uh, posted their analysis on Socrative. The fourth step is that all of those posts that, uh, that were posted by the groups are displayed on a projected or a shared screen. And the fifth step was to start a vote on Socrative to allow the students to review all of the posted analyses and then to vote for what they consider to be the best analysis. And then the step after that was to provide a critique of the so-called best analysis, the one that received the most votes. And the last step was to review the analytical framework of the three-step legal analysis. The key competencies that I'm getting students to apply in this exercise is first and foremost critical thinking by giving them an analytical framework that allows them to analyze and critique a situation. The second competency is collaboration by getting them to work in groups to put together that analysis. The third competency is communication. By asking them to provide a written analysis, that is getting the students to apply their written communication skills, but there are also verbal communication skills involved in their collaboration process in preparing each group's analysis. And then the fourth, competency would be initiative and leadership. So this is the first day of class. So a lot of students don't know each other. So it does require some initiative and leadership in each of those groups you know, to, to get that collaborative process going and to uh, get the group to produce a final work product, which is the uh, analysis of the video.